We're here at the Mining in Daba, a platform that has welcomed exhibitors, big mining corporations, governments and investors alike to discuss the future of mining, where it's leading to and which next big project to invest in. I'm joined by TP and Choncho, CEO of the IDC, to give us a breakdown as to what it's, the corporation is doing and where to from here. Thank you for joining me. Um, I want to know the, the, the theme around here, and we spoke about it, is, is the theme of just transitioning. But uh, the current established miners is sitting on the back end going, but you're missing, uh, missing a point. But I, I think what I want to know from you is uh, what role does IDC play in the context of the mining and Daba and the just transitioning? Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, the, the mining industry, as we know, uh, produces uh, different types of minerals. And uh, what we are learning at this uh, conference today is that there is an increased focus in minerals, which I can call minerals of the future. These are uh, minerals such as uh, cobalt or lithium, the kind of minerals that are important in producing what has commonly been referred to as green energy going forward. So the shift that we see is that there has to be increased investment, just like it has been over many years of investment in coal, in manganese, uh, bulk uh, type commodities. There has to be growing investment in chrome, in lithium, in hydrogen, in order to produce the kind of minerals that are necessary to go into renewable technologies, into storage, uh, um, energy storage uh, uh, technologies, as well as uh, battery systems that are used to power uh, new generation vehicles or electric vehicles as we call them. So uh, that is the one thing, the industry has to invest and then institutions such as ourselves, the Industrial Development Corporation, I think we have probably a three-legged role. One, yes, to support mining companies with funding and capital. Secondly, to mitigate, working with uh, communities to mitigate the effects of reduced investment perhaps in the traditional uh, mining areas such as coal and so on and so on. So uh, supporting small businesses, supporting those enterprises that are part of that value chain to also transition into new uh, technologies. Now speaking of the support of funding uh, for this trans just transitioning, is that part of your strategy to decarbonize uh, and where are you planning on going with that strategy? Correct. It is part of the strategy, not only of the IDC, but primarily a strategy of the various industries. I mean, let's take one particular example which demonstrates how important this subject matter is. The European Union has uh, made a pronouncement that come 2030, they will not be accepting imported vehicles that are not green. So in other words, uh, vehicles that are powered uh, using liquid fuel and so on and so on. So, as you know, South Africa has a very big automotive sector. Uh, all the major manufacturers of the world have assembly operations here in South Africa. So there is, over the next 10 years, a significant transition that has to happen where they uh, retool their operations, use more green energy, produce cars that are environmentally friendly, uh, probably electric vehicles or battery-fired vehicles and so on. So, so that is just but one example. In the steel industry, for instance, we know steel is the one sector which uh, is a large consumer of uh, power, of electricity. And so increasingly around the world, uh, companies or buyers of steel products are saying they would like to have what is called green steel. So in other words, steel which is produced using uh, renewable energy or uh, green type uh, power. So that is one example. Uh, we already see in South Africa here that uh, companies that are involved in uh, transportation are beginning to change their fleets uh, from being fired uh, using hydrocarbons, petrol and diesel. 
uh, to increasingly use either batteries or gas and so on and so on. So this transition is happening uh, and it will continue to happen for a number of years. But I want to restate the importance of uh, managing the adverse, the potential adverse effects thereof on small businesses and communities. And that is where a diverse set of support measures have to be brought to bear so that people don't lose their livelihoods as a result of the transition. I'm glad you're talking or, or touching on the small communities. Now, inclusivity is a big part of, of, our, of this business. You cannot not have them involved. Where does IDC stand on that? In, in the sense of um, what are you doing to help bring this community together and to create inclusivity? Correct. That's a very important one. Uh, in every project that the IDC gets involved in as a financier or as an investor, particularly the large significant projects, what we do is that we work with the uh, businesses, the promoters, uh, the sponsors of the projects in order to promote integration of small businesses into the supply chain. So you take uh, either a mining business or a large manufacturing business, you have to have a look and say what are the various components, what are the inputs that are used in the production system of that business. And then say in the community around on a very proactive basis, go out and seek companies that can be suppliers uh, into that large enterprise. So integrating them into the supply chain. That's how you give access to livelihoods. And then of course at a social level, working with many of these big businesses in certain areas, uh, the IDC would work with municipalities to see the extent to which, for instance, water and sanitation uh, infrastructure can be improved in order to provide access to water. We work with a lot of mining houses to build schools in certain instances and, and provide the kind of social infrastructure that is important for the well-being of people. So you're right. Uh, the president spoke earlier today and he made a very interesting remark and said, gone are those days where mining companies can simply operate in certain localities and not assist with the livelihoods of communities. They have to. It's, a, it's, a, it's an imperative. Any company that does not uh, include uh, in its mix the upliftment of ordinary citizens, at least make a contribution. Any company that doesn't do that is at risk of failing in the long run. Very true. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, that was TP Nchoncho, the CEO of IDC, giving us a breakdown of the future of just transitioning, where does South Africa fit into that and what IDC and their strategies to move us along forward.